again. Good morning, and thank you for joining us here. Um, it is now 10.02, so uh, with Hawaiian time adjusted for, I think uh, we are going to get started. My name is Ryan Ozawa. I'm the Communications Director here at Hawaii Information Service. As you have joined and as others join this event, you'll note that you're muted, and I think we're going to keep that that way through this presentation. Um, one thing that has happened accidentally that I'd like to ask your help with is that um, sometimes as you play with the Zoom interface, especially if it's new to you, you might find yourself accidentally sharing your screen. Um, I'm sure you probably don't want that uh, any more than we do, so try to avoid doing that. But of course, if that happens, I'll do my best to clear things through. Um, some tips for Zoom, if you're new to it, you can enlarge your Zoom window right now. You can maximize it by clicking in the title bar or just drag it to make it as big as possible. That'll allow you to see as much of the screen as possible. You can also click a button in the upper right hand corner of your screen to hide or view the participants of this uh, event. Now, it's great to see everyone's smiling morning faces, but uh, if you just want to see the presentation, you can just hide those participants uh, right now. In just a bit, I'm going to introduce our presenter. His name is Gordon. But first, I wanted to let you know, if you are looking at the grid or list of participants, I'd like to introduce some members, uh, some of my great colleagues here at HIS who are joining us today to provide their support for you. And of course, to Gordon, we have Colleen Yasuhara. She's our Chief Operating Officer, pretty much the driver of any project at HIS, and someone who was instrumental in the creation and maintenance and upgrades to the client portal. We have Michael Torres, a project manager, works very closely with Colleen. So Mike uh, helps move all of the things around and keep things flowing at HIS. We have Ron Ohama, someone who's probably familiar to many of you. And in fact, if you've not met him at any of our events on Kauai or Hawaii Island, this could be an opportunity to get a gander at his smiling face. He is here. Um, I also want to introduce Tim Martin, He's uh, in our sales department and uh, always interested in the products that we provide to our members. Although I want to again, or not again, uh, stress that the client portal is not a sold product that comes with your MLS membership and works seamlessly with research. So we're very excited that you're interested in learning more about this tool. Uh, without further ado, uh, let me get to Gordon. He is your presenter today. This is only his second uh, training presentation, but uh, if you were here on Thursday, uh, Tuesday, he did a fantastic job. He joined us three years ago or so. He uh, was in customer support. He was answering your calls and emails. He did go to Japan to study for a year and a half, but uh, suffice it to say, he missed us almost as much as we missed him, and we were glad to have him back. He's uh, back in customer support. Support, but helping with other projects such as the this. Um, I do want to note for Gordon's sake that he has been the one employee in quarantine the longest of any of us. Uh, so um, a great deal of empathy and love for him. Um, pretty much cooped up more than any of us have, although we have been at home since March 19th. Uh, I'm sure you all can identify. So uh, this presentation is going to be, if we do it correctly, less than 90 minutes. Uh, we allotted about an hour for the demo itself, the presentation, but we were uh, we got ahead of that yes, on Tuesday, and then at least half an hour for questions and answers if you have questions. Now, as to questions, we have a chat room here in Zoom. There is a button on the bottom of your screen for chat. If you click that, it opens a little panel where there's a conversation panel for written uh, messages. Um, what we will be doing is Ron will be monitoring the channel, and if you have and post a question, he will either try to help you answer it, or if it makes sense to have that question answered during the presentation for everybody, he will be taking it down and then uh, lobbing them over at Gordon after his presentation so he can answer those questions for everybody. So again, the chat room is there for you, and uh, if we can't get to your question during the presentation or you have one after the presentation, please, please, please give us a call. Customer support is available in their comfy, cozy homes by phone and by email. So there's a number of ways you can get more information if you don't feel you got everything you needed from this event. So a little bit about our portal, and Gordon will cover a lot of this as well. We released it in May of 2018, so we're just about into its second anniversary. 
Uh, it was built with the benefit of many other client portals that we had seen out in the market, but something that was wanted by our members. And uh, frankly, it was uh, Hawaii Island members in particular, but all of our members that gave us suggestions and feedback and testing on ways to make it even better for everybody. So if you were participating in those early betas or if you've been using it and sending us ways we can make it better, thank you very much because we have done that. Uh, one second. Um, I lost my notes for a bit. Okay. Um, so in any case, uh, it's been around for a bit. It's basically the easiest way to provide personalized uh, service and information to your members. It's beautiful. It looks good uh, on any device. And uh, it most importantly, I think, gives you insights from behind the scenes into how active and interested your clients are in the home search service. So um, it is provided to you as a member benefit, as I said, uh, and members love it. Some members have hundreds of portals and they just really enjoy it. So I hope that this helps you similarly take advantage of it. So with that uh, great and um, overly long introduction, I will turn it over to the star of the show here, Mr. Gordon Inoue. Gordon, please take it away. Thank you, Ryan, for that amazing intro. So as you mentioned, my name is Gordon. I work in customer support and technical support alongside Ron and John. Uh, I'm sure some of you have spoken to me on the phone or maybe you received emails from me to help you with your questions. You know, and I, I hope that I've been helpful to you. And today I'm going to be going over a demonstration for our client portal. So I really hope that you can take away something from today, which is my goal is to help you guys learn more about what we have to offer you here at HIS and to show that we're really thinking about helping you guys and your business. And also, as Ryan mentioned, uh, this is only my second presentation. Uh, I'm unfortunately not as experienced as Ron, so I ask for your patience and your understanding as we go through this. And during my presentation, if you have any questions, once again, please direct them to the chat. Ron will field them. And then if the question is big enough or if enough of you have the same question, we will definitely answer it at the end. So with that being said, let me start with my short introduction here. I have a PowerPoint set up. I will start sharing my screen right now. OK. So this would be our short introduction to our client portal. I'll briefly go over the benefits and features that we have available for you all. So what is the client portal? The client portal is a new visually appealing way for you to interact with your clients that looks great on computers, laptops, and smartphones. So we at HIS have definitely learned a lot from all the feedback that you guys have given us regarding our website. And for those of you that have done the beta testing for Portal, we've taken a lot of your feedback there. And we wanted to make sure that when you're interacting with your clients, you have a way that you can do it wherever you want and it'll look good on any device. So. Even though I only mentioned smartphones, I'd also like to mention that Portal looks great on tablets as well. The Client Portal is a tool that allows for more dynamic and personalized interaction with clients that allows them to communicate with you in more detail about their interests. So we know that you guys interact with your clients through email, through the prospecting system, and all of that. And of course, they can reply to you in those emails. However, with this Client Portal, we want to give you guys a way to interact with your clients more intimately and more in detail and give them a more personalized experience to talk about what they want to see out of the listings and out of the potential properties that they want to maybe purchase or sell. The client portal is a supplement to the already existing research website that helps you serve your clients better. So as Ryan mentioned earlier, the client portal isn't an extra service that you have to pay for. It comes with your MLS membership, meaning it's free with your membership, and it's meant to work alongside research as something to enhance your experience and help you reach out to your clients more effectively. And lastly, the client portal is a virtual space that allows you to communicate with your clients with ease. So email is very convenient, yes, and we understand that you do a lot of communication and I send them through email, However, we want to give you guys an easy way to with all of your clients. So, 
with that said, I will transition over to our main portal page to give you guys a look at what this new and fantastic tool looks like. Okay. So here we have our client portal page. So as noted at the top, we are currently viewing it, the client portal as an agent. So this means this is your perspective as the agent and what your customer's client portal page will look like. We'll note at the top that this is viewing portal for Kona Kevin, which is the client's name. So that way you know that you're viewing the portal as yourself along with this notification, which by the way, you can get rid of. And the very first thing that I'd like to point out to you guys is that your information on the client portal will be front and center. Actually, let me see if I can create a pointer that's maybe a little easier for you guys to see. All right, there we go. So we have your information front and center. Your name will be there. Your agent headshot will be there, as well as a bio here. And a bio within that to serve for any other details that you might want to add. Noting about this bio is you can edit it, and this is unique to this client's portal page, meaning that it won't show up on anybody else's page if you edit it here. It'll only show up here. So as you can see, you can add your designations to the bottom. You can create a custom designate designation or a custom line. Here you can edit the initial intro that your customers see. And then you can edit that sub bio, which I've used here to indicate to my client, Kona Kevin, that we have appointments scheduled. So basically you can put anything that you want in this section that you want your client to see, notes about appointments, notes about potential open houses or properties, or maybe just a nice greeting. And on top of that, you are allowed to customize it to personalize your experience with our client portal and customize your client's experience with portal. I'm just going to go ahead and save that and it'll let you know with our toast notifications here at the top right. Then we have your contact information as well as somewhat of your business card, which will have your company name, your license number, your phone number, email, and a link to your website, if you so please. So we really wanted to make sure that the first thing your client sees when they open this is they see your name, they see what you want to say, and they see your contact information so that way they can remember how to get to you easily. So continuing at the top as well, we have our notifications section, which will show you all of the notifications from interactions that you have with your client. This can be adjusted with settings for your notifications as well, which I will cover in a little more detail later. Going back to our client portal, we have a few different sections to this page. So first we have Kona Kevin's listing activity, which you will see there are several different collections here, which indicates what Kona Kevin, my client, has done to the listings that I've provided with him and his feedback on them, which I'll cover how these interact later. We have listings from me. So these are listings or collections of listings that you have created for your client through either the prospecting system or you could create it from Portal itself by using a list of MLS numbers, creating a sales search in Portal, or you could even copy another Portal that you already have existing. So you could copy this and create another collection through here. In the last section here, we have Kona Kevin's sales searches. So anything that shows up in this section will be created by your client themselves which from their side of this client portal, they can create a search based on their preferences and based on the criteria that they want in order for you to see what exactly it is they are looking for. 
So now that I've gone over kind of a general view of this client portal page, you might be thinking, well, this looks great and all, but how do I get here from research? So before I go into any more detail, I want to show you guys how you get to this page from research itself. So here we have our tried and true research. I'm going to go to our contacts list in which you will create a contact. This is step one. So I'm going to name the contact. Give them an email address. So I will use my my work address, just as an example. And then once you've done that, you want to save and set up the search. So once you're here, you create your search as normal for your prospect. So I'm going to say 3-4 in this case, active contingent, and let's go with residential. And as you can see, it'll do the usual count for how many listings you have in your search results. Then you can go ahead and click Save a Search. And it'll create this. So as also a, a side note, I'm going to see show you that my email address, when I typed it in, does not show up here. That is because I have a search and notification setting. So don't be concerned that that isn't there. Then once we do that, we're going to go over to our prospects to show the prospect list. Then from the prospect list, you'll go over to the blue edit button. Once you do that, click add prospect to portal. It'll tell you you're adding this collection. You can change the name. So in this case, I'm going to say HIS Joe 3-4. And you can notify your client with an email message. And it'll say, oh, your client portal has been updated. You could send a CC to yourself or a BCC to yourself if you would like. You could CC it to other people that are maybe interested or if you want to keep track of things. And you can also change the email body here. So once you have all of this set up, click OK. And it'll add the collection to the portal. So because I don't have an email in there, because I tried to use my own email, it will say that. But then it'll give you a link, which you can copy here. And if you open a new tab and put it in to the address bar, you can go directly to the search that you just created for your client. And it'll show all of the results here. However, this I'm isn't the only way up. that. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Hello? I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, you're going a little too fast for me. Um, could you go over that last section again? Sure. And, and, unless there's people that would rather keep going. But um, yeah, if you could just go over that last little section. I kind of lost me. I'm tr trying to set up the search, and that's where I got lost. OK. Uh, yes, of course. I can go over that. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm just actually going to set up another search then, and we'll use Kevin Kona once again as an example so you can see the emails. So from the contact card, you can go to the prospect tab, or and then you could set up a search through either of these buttons. In this case, I'm going to use the button that you might first see, and we're going to set up the search. So I'm going to set up the same search that I had previously, which is 3-4, active contingent, and residential. So once you have all of your search criteria set up here, you can go ahead and click Save Search. And it'll save the prospect to that contact card that you've, you have. 
and you will once again go to prospects and it should show up as you can see right here clinic heaven's new search has showed up you go to the right side this blue edit button and go to the add prospect to portal So you'll have the ability to name the collection, which I'm going to change once again to Corn Kevin 3-4 Residential. And then you can click this to notify your client of this portal collection that you're creating for them. You have the ability to change everything that happens or that shows up in the email. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and click OK. And it'll say the collection was successfully added to the portal and email was sent to your client. And then, as you can see here, you'll be provided to a link that you can copy with this button. And once you can paste into the address bar, and it'll take you directly to that search in portal. So now that I've sent an email to my client, let me show you the what the email itself will look like. Okay, let me just transition over to my Outlook here. Okay, so hopefully you all can see this, but this is an example of what the email will look like when it's sent to your client. It'll notify them that you've created a client portal It'll tell them the criteria that you use to create the portal. And it'll give them a link which they can click to go directly to the client portal as well as any questions that they may have or if they need assistance in interacting with this, they can click this link that we've provided. And then your headshot will appear here. So as you can see, my headshot is there as well as your information. Not sure. My laser pointer. There we go. Sorry about that. I didn't realize my laser pointer had disappeared. So as you can see, the email is very simple, straightforward, and easy for your client to interact with. So I'm going to go back to research here. <clears throat> and this is, though, this is only one way that you can create a portal for your client through research. The other way that you can do so is to go through the search for listings function. So I'm going to open our left side menu here, go to search for listings. And then we can create a new search with different criteria here. I'm going to go ahead and do the same tax key with active contingent and change the property type to commercial just to have something different. And then I will click search now to get the search results. So as you can see, the search results show up here. And then once you're in the search results page, you will come down to the white more button. And it'll then show you an option that says here at the bottom, email via portal. So you have the ability to do our usual, take the information page by page, check off your results, and then not checked. So if you want to include everything in your search results, we would definitely suggest that you click not checked. And once you've clicked that, it'll show you 
that you are going to send these specific listings through portal. So something to mention here that is if you do it through this method, the collection that you're creating will only show information on these listings that you're sending now. So I'm going to go ahead and select a contact to send this to. Once again, send them an email. And if you're creating a portal for a client that does not have a contact card yet, you can add their contact information through this menu itself so you don't have to go back through the whole creating a new contact uh, process. But since I'm choosing to use Kona Kevin once again, I will fill out all this information. And then once I've done that, we're going to click OK. And it'll tell me that it's been successfully added to portal and the portal was emailed to my contact. I'm going to close these notifications. So once you've created these portal, or these portal for your clients, to navigate to portal from research without having to create a client, what you can do here is Go to contacts, and there will be a button or an option that says manage portals. And this will take you to your portal administrator page. And so here we have our portal administration page. It will show you all of the current portal collections that you have or the current client portals that you have for all of your clients. From here, you can also create a new portal if you so choose. But just keep in mind that these will only be for new clients because you are creating a portal itself and not a collection. Here, you can also change your overall portal preferences. So here we have your default branding, which, as I showed you before, if you edit the branding within your client's individual page, it will be unique to that client. However, if you edit it from here, it, this is the way that it will show up every time you create a new portal for a new client by default. And if you scroll down, we have different notification settings for you to go through. This will definitely personalize your experience with your client as well as yourself and allow you to have different ways to be notified of any activity that your client goes through, which we've added the ability for you to receive text messages of any client portal activity. You get an email. You will get a summary if you choose to select this option. You'll get a summary of your client's actions via text or email. And if you don't want to get too many notifications throughout the day, we all understand that that can be a little frustrating sometimes. We have the ability for you to change it so that you'll only get a daily summary of all of your clients' interactions with their portal collection. So that way you could just go through maybe a list of what they've done. And if you see something that might interest you to interact with them or talk to them about, you can look at it through there. Then this section is for your clients themselves, which this is where your clients will receive notifications about anything that you've done for their collections. So now let's go back to our portal administration page. As you can see, there are different things you can interact with here in the list. This button will take you directly to your client's portal. If we go back to the administration page, here's where you can copy a link of the portal itself to the clipboard and paste it anywhere for your reference. So say maybe your client had misplaced the email 
or they want to give it to their significant other or their partner to share with so they can both look at it later. You can copy this and send it in an email or a message, a messenger a message on Facebook or anything like that. You have the ability to check your client's activity page. So this will show all of their activity throughout the day and what they've been doing. And if you click on the drop down menus, it'll give you a detailed view of exactly when they did these actions. So that way we're trying to provide you with good data on what your client's activities are so that way you can better interact with them about these, these preferences or maybe what trends you see in what your clients are doing. Then you have the ability to manage their notifications from here. And in this screen for their individual notifications, you can see that there's more details of what the event was, the listing that they interacted with, and how long ago it was. In this page, you can also edit the individual notification settings for your clients. So previously I showed you that you can edit your overall notifications. Well now here you can edit the notifications for this individual client. So that way you can match it to their preferences on their activity. Maybe they don't want too many notifications or they want more notifications. So you could definitely change that here as well as editing your notifications from them. So say your client is very active, you might not want to have them or have it text you all the time when they do something immediately. So then you can just set it to what we have as a default, which is a daily summary. Okay, I'm gonna go back here. And now let's take a dive into Kona Kevin's portal page. So as you can see, the collections that I had created previously with Kona Kevin are here now. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of the collections for you guys. And here's what it'll look like. So as you can see, we have the listings to the left, which you can arrange in different manners and sort it by different categories. It'll say the collection name as well as when you last updated it, as well as a map that you can interact with which is provided via Google Maps. And it'll show you where all the properties are exactly located with these flags. And with these flags themselves, if you hover over them, on the left side, you'll notice that you're immediately taken to the listing on the list itself. And these will show you tiny previews and quick snippets of information if you just need a quick glance. Or if you're hovering over these flags, you can click them and it'll take you to the listing itself. So with that being said, let's go into one of the listings. So as you can see here, this is our listing page. We have taken a lot of feedback regarding our photo system and we chose to go with a beautiful mosaic view here, which you'll be able to easily see and scroll through all the pictures. That way you can potentially find a photograph that your client might be interested in that might attract them to the property, as well as you'll be able to, once again, look at the map and it'll show you exactly where this property is located, as well as the address right away. And so here at the top, we have the quick information, as I'd like to call it, which shows you all of the information that we believe and that our feedback pointed out from you guys that was important, or at least the most important. So we have the price, price per square foot, status, land tenure, land type, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage for both the property and the land, days on market, and year built. So. As I mentioned previously and showed you guys before, there was a listing activity section on Kona Kevin's page, which is interacted with by these three buttons here. 
So these three buttons your client can interact with by clicking them and it'll immediately send them to those listing activity collections. The heart is for something that they love. The thumbs up is for something that maybe they just liked or they have an interest in. And then the thumbs down is for anything that they're disinterested in. To show you the interactions of these buttons now, I'm gonna go ahead and transition over to Kona Kevin's view itself. So actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to try and show you both of their, uh, both of these screens side by side. So I'm going to go ahead and share my entire first screen here. And I'm going to show you the agent view. And then the client view. So on the left here, we have the agent view, which I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the main client portal page. And on this one, I will go to Kevin's page itself. So as you can see, this is what the client will see, your contact information, your bio. It'll tell them, welcome back. And they too also have a notifications feed that they can see what portal collections that you've been interacting with for them and any actions that they, you've taken on listings that they showed interest in. So we really wanted to be able to give your client in, the sense of empowerment and a sense of dynamic interactivity here on our client portal page. So that way they can more easily communicate and feel more comfortable talking to you about what they'd like. So to show you the interactions of the buttons here, I'm gonna go ahead and select one of the listings. And I'm going to heart it as Kona Kevin. So once Kona Kevin hearts that, all you have to do is refresh the page and it'll show up in the listing activity collection under the heart. So if I go to this, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. If I go to this, as you can see, the listing shows up here with Kona Kevin's heart. And the notifications also tell me that this is something that Kona Kevin added to his heart collection. And the other buttons work similarly as well. We're gonna go ahead and click thumbs up here on Kona Kevin's side, as well as show you how the chat function works, which we believe is definitely something that you guys will like, where your client can say, hey, really like this, this thing, tell me more, or let's discuss. They can send you a chat notification or a chat here, and if you go back to your client portal page, you can see that the notification showed up. It'll tell you the listing and say that your client sent you a new chat and clicking the notification will send you to that page specifically and open up the chat immediately so that way you can communicate with them. And when you respond to them, it will immediately show up in their chat window itself. I'm going to go ahead now and minimize the chat windows. So back on the agent view. And as you can see, the property that Kona Kevin just liked shows up in the like collection. So like I had mentioned before, we put a lot of emphasis on making sure that this client portal is very dynamic for you folks, that it updates constantly so that way you have a constant stream of information for yourself and your client, as well as just being able to interact with them on the go or interact with them immediately because we understand how important acting on that information is for you guys.
So I'm going to actually now focus on the client side here just for a bit to show you the other interactions that they have with the listing page. So as you can see, lower down, there are more detailed information bits, so remarks, mortgage calculator, as well as all of the property details of the listing itself, and an interactive map like you've seen before, which you can change to your liking and better show information for your client or whatever information your client is seeking, they can change that to view. And of course, along with the chat, your client has the ability to give you a call by clicking this button and it'll get, show your phone number and they can also email you directly. <clears throat> also with this listing page, there is the ability to scroll through listings themselves because we know how frustrating it can be sometimes on research to have to click your search results, go through, go to one listing, and then if you want to go to the next listing, you have to click back out to your search results and then click the next listing again. Well, now that we have these buttons, you can easily scroll through a list of all of the listings that are currently in this collection without having to do all that clicking. Okay, now what we're going to do here is transition back to the agent view. And the last thing I'm going to show you here is how you can add a collection through the portal itself, just in case you might not have access to research at the time. And so that way you can do a seamless addition here in portal itself. So we're going to go ahead and click add collection. You can do it by a list of MLS numbers. This will once again create a static collection in which only the MLS numbers that you put in the list will be updated with information. Or you could do the save search function. So let's do the save search. So as you can see, there's a similar interface where you see all the listings here currently. And here are the search criteria that you can use. It's basically everything that you have access to in research. So you could do by LS number, address, city, zip code, condominium. You can even do it by project or a subdivision, if you please. And you have the other options here, which through our feedback, we determined are the most important ones that you guys wanted to see here for instant access. And let me go ahead and create a search. So I'm going to specify big item because my client is from Kona can specify a price and let's just say mm, three bedrooms minimum and three bathrooms minimum and as you can see the map here dynamically updates to show all the results that you're seeing on the left side so that way all the information is current to what you need to see and to match your search results or to match your search criteria sorry and once you think that this is good for your client, you can go ahead and save the search. Name it. And then you can, once again, notify your client via email of your creation of this portal or this collection. Excuse me. And it'll show up instantly. Then also with that, as I mentioned previously, your client is also able to create their own searches. So let me go back to the client view one last time. We will go back out to their portal. 
and your client will see this at the bottom, which will ask them more searching to do, create a new search. So they can click this button and they have access to the same kinds of information that you do as the agent. Of course, they're not going to see any listing agent information and all of the things that we cover or block from their view in customer format will also be covered here, so you don't have to worry about that. But what we want to emphasize here is that your clients will be searching through data that's directly from us here at Hawaii Information Service. They don't have to go through Zillow. They don't have to go through Trulia to search for their listings and to see information. They can use this to search for what they want or what they need and what they like. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how they would set up a search. Let's say Corona Kevin's interested in maybe a little more expensive stuff. You can designate, and as you can see, everything interacts the same. Let's say residential. And once they are happy with their search, they can go ahead and save it here. They'll tell them, okay, you saved your search. And when they go back to their portal home, their save search shows up immediately. Sorry. Apologies for that. I scrolled a little bit too quickly. Here we go. And they can create as many searches as they want. And they also have the ability to access all of the information here too as well as they saw as the same that you can see from the agent view. So with that, I'd like to conclude my portal demonstration. I hope that you'll be able to take away something from this. Maybe you learned something new or found something that you really liked. Well, I just want to also emphasize once again is that here at HIS, we always want to make sure that you guys are able to do good business with your clients. And we always want to provide you with tools that will allow you to empower your business and help you move forward. And we'd like to think and we hope that this client portal is a step in the right direction for working better for you guys, our agents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon. And uh, we really appreciate that and uh, good timing once again. Um, uh, we will now move to our question and answer portion, pulling from the chat room. And I would like to ask our customer support superstar, frankly, Ron, to uh, pitch some uh, questions and either he can answer them or you can answer them with control of your screen. How's that sound? Sounds good. Yep. Let's go into the Q&A. All right, Ron, what have you got? Um, sorry, I was busy in chat <laughs> most of the, <laughs> Good. Most Good of the time. Um, they're still coming in, so thank you, everybody that sent in questions. Um, let me, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, Gordon, so again, um, sorry, I was busy in chat, so I don't know if you missed it, but can you briefly go over um, if we're able to... Um, uh, get notified by chats through text messages? Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. So let me go ahead and switch back over to our agent view here. So if you want to be able to be notified through text messages, you go to the notification settings here, your default notification settings. And you'll want to check off text me immediately. And when you do that, you'll be met with a warning that will say you might receive a high volume of text messages, which it will text you every time that there is an individual action as indicated here. And you can confirm that you want that if that's the kind of interaction or the kind of information that you want from this uh, product or from our tool here. And it'll go ahead and check off everything. And of course, if you don't want to know about certain actions that your client takes, you can go ahead and check it off.
Thank you very much. Um, uh, another question was about, I guess what you've demonstrated is that uh, portals are, are sort of in, uh, tied to specific email addresses. What happens if a email address is shared by a husband and wife? Or basically, what would happen if more than one person accesses a link? I would imagine it doesn't know how to tell people apart in that respect. Yeah, so all the interactions will come through the same. Uh, you won't be able to distinct between them. But that's also why we have your ability to interact with them dynamically and quickly through the chat function. You could ask them questions about it. And you don't necessarily have to wait for your contacts or your clients to contact you either through chat. You can start a chat with them on any of the listings that you see in the collection itself or through the notification settings. But if uh, I, I guess if a husband and wife is, are using the same link, they could be getting into a heart unheart war <laughs> in the portal. Yes, that All right. could potentially happen. Yeah, uh, Ron, you got another one. Uh, um, can, oh, sorry. Actually, can I select a question that I see in the chat? I don't know if you answered it yet. Sure. Well, go for it. Go ahead. Yeah. So I see one from Jen here who asks, how do you delete listings to minimize what is there? So that's a really good question, Jen. Thank you for that. Uh, what you can do or what your client can do is if they don't really like something or it's not really within their interests, let me actually switch back over to the client view here. Is You can see that there was a dislike section. So once they go into a listing collection that you've created, they can go ahead and say, hmm, maybe I'm not really interested in this property. And they can go ahead and just click the dislike button. So what that button would do then is add it to that dislike pile or that dislike collection. And then as you can see here previously, there were five listings in this collection, and now there are only four. So that way you can filter out any listings that might not be interested in, or they might not be interested in through that method. All right, um, let's see, other question, Ron, do you got one? Um, not right now, Ryan. Okay, let me take a look at uh, a list here. Um, let's see. Can you, if this, like, this is actually a research question, but it might be helpful to uh, others from Alan. What's the difference between a contact and a prospect, uh, Gordon? Oh, sure. And yeah, we can definitely go over that. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch back to my Google Chrome here really quick, since I, that's the browser I have research open in. So the Contacts or contact card itself is basically like your Rolodex, say, where you would write down your contacts information and you just keep it there. This is just basically all of the information that you have on your client themselves, name, home address, you know, any suffixes, or their preferred method of communication, as well as their socials, if they have any, and a phone number. While your prospects, let me go ahead and go to the prospect page just to give you a visual, is a saved search that you have set up for them that matches or that matches what you might think they want in a listing or anything that they have told you that they're looking for. So basically, the prospect is a search that you're running for them and the contact is their information or the client's contact information itself. Thank you, Gordon. And um, to let everyone know, of course, we have a prospects and contacts search, uh, prospects and contacts training session live led every month. Um, so you can look inside of research uh, for the training link. It's uh, there with the uh, graduation cap on the left-hand side of Gordon's screen. And that will show you where we have training sessions scheduled every month. We're nearing the end of the month, so there might not be much left for April. But uh, John in customer support is setting up the calendar for May, and it'll be there very soon. Uh, Ron, have you got uh, another question? 
Yeah. Okay, Gordon. So um, Diana had a question. Um, does the portal need to be renewed uh, for each prospect every so often like they have to do in the research? So I would definitely recommend that you keep your prospects updated uh, for the system. But however, the collections themselves in portal do not expire the same way that they do in research. So the collections and the prospects, while you use the prospect to set up a collection itself, they are separate in the respects of how they expire. Excellent. Um, any uh, next question, Ron? You got one? Um. I have one here, if I can jump in from, uh, let's see. Oh, I see what I'm supposed to be looking for. Um, how are you notified of the chat? How do you know you've gotten a chat? Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna go back to the portal preferences section and show you the notification settings. So here you can see that you have the ability to adjust your notifications for any chat that you receive. And like all the other interactions, you can be texted immediately. So when you receive a chat from your client, our system here will text you right away. You can get an email immediately, which it'll send you an email if your client starts a chat or continues a chat with you. Or you can also get a summary of all the chat messages that you've received, new or continued, after they've been inactive for a certain time, or a daily summary if you don't want to receive too many notifications throughout the day. All right. Um, let me try one from uh, Christina. When you're in the portal admin and doing uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I think you, you covered that. <laughs> Trying to keep up. These are all good questions. And if we did not get to it during this uh, presentation, we will send you an email uh, after a word. Uh, when you're in the portal admin and doing a new search and you save it, is there a difference in saving it as a collection or new search? When I do that, it function is only saving as a collection, and I can't figure out how to do the search from the client perspective. That's from Christina. How do you search as a uh, as your client to create a safe search? Well, if you'd like to do that and do it from the client view, let's say, uh, what you'll want to do is probably open a new browser window like I did earlier. As you saw, I had Edge for my client here. You could take their portal link and go in there and adjust their searches that way if they want you to run searches for them. But if you're concerned about the view that your clients have, the differences that there will be is your client, like I mentioned before, won't be seeing any listing information or listing agent information or anything that they can use that they don't normally see in research if you use the customer format. Understood. A very quick question from Patsy. When a property sells, does it show the, the asking and the sold price? Sold price. Uh, I suppose that's just a question for maybe on research as well. So when a property does sell, we do show the selling price or the final sold price. And the original price will stay on the initial listing itself. So when a listing sells, you might see the original sold price in the MLS one-liner, uh, the original asking price in the MLS one-liner. And then the sold price will always show up below that. So I could show you an example here. Give me a second. Okay, so as you can see here, 
on the one liner itself, when you do run a search, you'll see that the initial asking price is here under price. And then the final sold price shows up alongside all the sold information. Okay, uh, Ron, have you got one? Uh, yeah, um, Jen has a good question. Um, if we have, if Jen has a saved search for client, is there an easy way to switch or move them over to the client portal? So, um, uh, Jen, I'm, I'm assuming this is a saved search that you run. Um, I'm, I'm trying to um, distinguish between a saved search and a prospect search. So if it's a saved search and this is something you're doing every week and sending it over, it would probably be a good idea to make it a prospect. Um, yeah, so Gordon, you can take it over there. Yeah, I definitely agree with what Ron is saying uh, that if you're running a search that you do a specific search from within your saved searches, so on the search for listings page right here and you run one of these searches, we definitely recommend that you make it a prospect because uh, I mentioned this earlier, but I'll cover it again because I believe it's really important. So thank you for this question is that when you do a portal collection from a prospect, that is when their collection becomes dynamic and it will update with any new information that those search criteria find within our system. But if you do it from a saved search, so I'm going to show you once again, I'll maybe test, let's see, I'll do one of the tests or examples that I have here. And if you try to do it from this, run the search that you always run, maybe weekly, monthly, whatever it may be, and you get these search results and you try to create a portal from these search results that you get. So once again, going to the more button at the bottom and doing email via portal, selecting not check if you want all the search results and it'll take you to this. Doing or creating a portal collection through this method only pulls information specific to everything in your search results and it will not update dynamically. It'll be a static collection. All right, um, Ron. I know you're you're oh. typing answers in the chat and <laughs> following the conversation. So, good multitasking. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, um, so Julie, actually, well, this is not really a question for Gordon, I suppose, but Julie had a great question where um, I'll just give the answer. Okay, so. Uh, when, when you set up your prospect search and send that to the portal, every single email, you know, the, the ongoing emails that the portal, I mean, the, um, excuse me, that research is prospecting generates, all the emails that research generates for that prospect search, every link in there is a portal link. So if they click on, you know, the MLS number, that's, that's a portal click. So that is um, something that is recorded and something you're notified of. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers your, your question, Julie. Um, yeah, that is good for everybody to know. Once that prospect search is sent to the portal and the collection is in the portal, all the, e all the clicks in the email are counted as portal clicks. And, and they are viewing the listing within the portal. So that, that is a great, uh, great question. Um, Gordon, um, can searches be set to run on a certain day or a specific time? Oh, okay, sorry, sorry Gordon. Did you hear uh, there was a little bit of a, a delay. Sorry about that. That's why I was kind of like waiting because I saw your mouth moving, but there was no sound. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Oh, um, uh, sure. So it was specific specific time. Or is having a search run at a specific time? Uh, um, can it be set to run at a certain day or a specific time? 
So if we're talking within the portal itself, let's see, notifications. Uh, let's see here. So I actually, can I ask a clarifying question? Sorry, is that within research or are you talking about within portal? Um, I, well, um, so, so, uh, let, let me jump in for that. So the portal doesn't automatically run any searches. Um, when the portal, when you, or when you or your client views a portal, it will run that search right away and give you an updated number on the matches. But if we're saying, um, scheduling searches, it would need to be done within research within the prospecting. So by the prospecting yeah. Board, in the prospecting garden, can you set a certain time or a certain day? Okay, so let's, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan, did you want to say something? Oh, well, I mean, I was, I was thinking if the question is like, how current is the information on the portal? Like, does it, do they, is it only useful after 8 a.m. or noon or 3 p.m.? The uh, very important thing to stress is that the portal is linked directly to the MLS. When you're, when you or your client searches in the portal, they, best, they are effectively searching the MLS just like you. So the instant something comes on, it would be available to them. The instant something comes off the market, it would not be available to them. But yes, uh, there are ways to, I believe, Gordon, mm -hmm. set a specific time for the emails that get sent from the research side? Yes. Yes, there is definitely a way to do that. So if you go over to your prospects menu one more time, and you go ahead and click the edit button on one of the prospects, you have the ability to edit your notification schedule in research. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And you have several options available to you, which is never by email immediately. So this means when new information that matches your prospect here shows up, they instantly get an email or you can set it up to send at a specific time, excuse me, a specific time that works for you and your client. And you can set it to where it'll only send an email between certain times as well. So say to, to 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. And then you'll only receive email notifications for properties that match the prospects within that time frame. Very good. Um, uh, Ron, any more uh, portal portal questions for Gordon? I Otherwise, don't think so. Don't wanna... I think, okay. Nope, I think we're good. Well, uh, again, everybody who's remained with us, 40 of you, very impressive. Uh, thank you again very much for your time. And again, if you have questions, uh, Ron, Gordon, John will be on the phones uh, as soon as we're done here to answer your questions live. Uh, thank you once again for sharing your time with us. We will have more uh, workshops like this on other tools uh, in the future. So watch your email inboxes. Um, thanks to Colleen and Mike and uh, Tim for being on the call as well with uh, Ron and Gordon. And uh, we're going to wrap this up now. And again, thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful week. Please stay safe.